So now in this video, we're going to look at the 555 timer in monostable mode. You can also call it a one shot. And so the LED is going to be off. We are not going to use the LED. Sometimes we have one where it comes from the 5 volt supply to the output. That one would be on, but uh, we're not going to use that resistor. We're just going to use the one that goes to ground. So uh, when the output is low, basically it's connected to ground the LED is off. That's the output pin. What is also going on is pin 7 internally is also connected directly to ground uh, to begin with. This is before we press the switch. And uh, so you can see here we have a current path through that resistor. It won't charge the capacitor. It will go directly to ground. We got ground on both sides of the capacitor right there. That's the discharge pin, pin 7. Pin 6 is a threshold pin. Uh, we'll get to that uh, coming up. So in any case, we want to do something. Also pin 4 is the reset pin. We're telling it not to do anything by putting it to the positive supply. It's waiting for uh, close to uh, a ground uh, voltage. Uh, closer to 0 volts than 5 volts in this case since we're using a 5 volt power supply. So it's not going to do anything. Now pin 2. It's getting a high signal before we press the button. And it sees 5 volts because all we got is we're a low resistance there compared to the switch which is open which is a very high resistance we close the switch that gets rid of the resistance to ground we get a zero volt uh, to pin two it's waiting for one third or less of the supply voltage and zero volts is as far down as you can go so when you press that switch the trigger pin uh, triggers it sets the 555 timer in motion and uh, what happens is first off the output goes high and uh, so it's not 5 volts though, we lose about a volt and a half for most 555 timers. There's specialty 555 timers where you'd get the full 5 volts if you're using a 5 volt supply. But uh, most uh, 555 timers, we're going to use the NE555, you get 3.5 volts. But in any case, that LED will light up. Also, pin 7 will stop connecting to ground. It'll be like an off switch for the most part. So then the current going through the resistor there now charges the capacitor. And so... Uh, lower value capacitor, uh, lower value resistor I mean, will allow more current to flow, the capacitor will charge faster. A higher value resistor will be less current charging the capacitor, it will take longer. And larger value capacitors will take longer, smaller value capacitors will go shorter. So you can balance those out. We'll look at the math, it's not too hard for uh, calculating uh, how much time you're going to get for the values you use. In any case, the uh, output's high the capacitor is charging. Pin 6 is just monitoring that voltage. 7 is like an open switch. We get to two thirds of the supply voltage. Pin 6 says to start discharging. And uh, so that's a direct connection. It instantly discharges and the output goes low. And then it stays in that condition until pin 2 gets another uh, low uh, signal of uh, 0 volts and uh, starts the whole process over again. So we uh, Looked at that enough. When it comes to the timing, you take the capacitance in farads and the resistance in ohms. You multiply them together and then multiply that by 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah, so, so not bad. And uh, one farad, uh, 0 0.001 farad is the same as a thousand microfarad or a millifarad. But usually we don't refer to capacitance in millifarads. But in any case, that's one one thousandths. That's 1,000, you end up with 1. And then down here, 1 1,000th one times 10,000, you end up with 10. But you got 1 times 1.1, 1 .1, that's 1.1 seconds. And then uh, 10 for those two times 1.1, 1 .1, you got about 11 seconds. So this is probably not going to be exact, especially because uh, capacitance, uh, capacitors are usually not uh, uh, terribly close to their value. You know, they're not terribly far either. But uh, also resistors waver a bit. So there's a number of factors that will change the timing uh, slightly, but for the most part, this will be fairly accurate. And here we have the setup on the board. So it's a 555 timer. There's a little notch up here. Sometimes there's a little divot there, and the numbering goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you go across 5, 6, 7, 8. So longer integrated circuits, you keep counting until you get the bottom, jump across, and go up. But in any case, we have... Uh, VCC, the positive supply, to pin 8, and then pin 1 here, there's the uh, ground jumper, jumper going to ground, I should say, and uh, right below that is the trigger pin, and you can see here a jumper goes up to 
a one, uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor right there and the bottom of the switch we close the switch we get a direct connection to ground for zero volts the uh, pin 4 the reset pin we don't want it to do anything so we're directly to the positive supply we got the output there the 220 ohm resistor to protect the LED and uh, long lead the anode there short lead the cathode plus a flat edge right there going to ground now we have our timing part of it so right now the uh, resistor is passing current and it's going to uh, going to ground right there so when we look at the power supply even though no LEDs are lit or anything there's some current going so you can see we are at 5 volts there I still have current limited to 20 milliamps I don't think we need to exceed that so in any case we have the uh, resistor going from the positive supply to the discharge pin there's a little jumper right here you should be able to see it but uh, just a little metal right there from uh, 7 to 6 the uh, threshold pin and then it comes to the capacitor so this is a 1000 microfarad you can see it is to the negative supply over there that's the negative side with the uh, band right there but uh, in any case let's uh, get to looking at things so first let's look at the voltage of the signal and for some reason the oscilloscope uh, triggers it but uh, now things are settled and you can see just a very brief uh, press the LED went high. If I do hold it though, it's going to stay high, unfortunately. I think it does flicker off maybe. Uh, but in uh, any case, we will now look at the output. Why not? So there you can see that uh, while the LED was lit, we got up to about 3.5 volts. So about a volt and a half, approximately short of the 5 volt power supply. Now we'll uh, zoom back and we'll look I falsely triggered it again at the capacitor. I can go to any point here. It's all one connection for the most part. So I'll press that quick. And now you can see the capacitor charge to about two thirds of the supply voltage right there. So you can tell if we had six volts, that would raise it enough to get to four. But uh, we'll just stick with five here. I showed that in an earlier video. Now, let's uh, slow things down. We'll go to the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor as soon as I find it there it is okay put that to the positive side of the uh, supply we'll stick with the capacitor again and there you can see now we have a much slower curve right there and uh, so that is 10 squares across and there you can see it was about uh, 10 seconds right there and we can look at uh, actually we saw the other voltages they're going to be the same and uh, we looked at the uh, LED so as long as it's lit you know that it's uh, right there so really the uh, capacitor curve was the only thing that uh, isn't really obvious from watching this directly so I'm really going to end it there make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. I got links down in the description. That will help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.